Bonjour, everyone. Hi, this is Nesheen Lokat. Welcome to Communications from Home. That's my weekly show. Get a little thing here for you. There you go. Trying out new fancy stuff at Be Live. Be Live TV is our partners um, that we can do these kind of um, neat kind of shows. You know, we can show you pictures and we can have more than one guest on with us. And so Be Live TV, we've actually been with them for over a year now. And uh, and they keep adding new stuff for us. And so this is this is one of them that I haven't used before. And uh, it's that crawler thing. Welcome to uh, the show. And it is Tuesday night, December 11th. I know. It, it, the, the month is going by really, really fast, right? And I had... Um, yeah, 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 yeah. I was trying to do something here. <laughs> I was getting ready to come to come up to Star Nations Academy where I do the um, live streams from, right? And I was um, actually hmm, working on a document and I printed it out for us tonight and I don't see it. I think I forgot to grab it off from the, um, the printer. Rats. <laughs> well, let's see. Uh, see if I can get the document, the soft copy up here, which will be helpful to us, I hope. Nope, that's not it. And let's see. You know, since I started doing, putting things in a different place, I'm, I'm losing where I put my documents. Now, okay, I think I know where I can find it. I have to go to Google, Google, Google Documents. And uh, we'll get it. We'll get it pulled up for us so that we uh, know exactly what we're going to be talking about tonight. It's the list of, of uh, articles that we have uh, for the December issue magazine. Yeah. So as I'm doing this, um, let's see. Is that the one? Well, let's see. No, nope, that's not it. Here, I think this is it. I think, I think. Yes, that's it. Yay. <laughs> Yay. I love it when technology works. <laughs> Good. Excellent. Yay. All right. So um, I'm going to hide this thing and hide that. That's done. <laughs> so <clears throat> every month we publish a magazine that is called Star Nations Magazine. And many of you are subscribers to the magazine, which we're very grateful for. And um, tonight's show is all about the magazine because we just published it yesterday, uh, the December issue. And I am going to like and share the broadcast before we get rolling with that. Um, let's see. So I've got my phone, <laughs> you know, and if we, if you wouldn't mind helping us do that to share and like uh, the broadcast, that would really be nice. It'd be very helpful um, because I'll tell you why. Um, it helps us to be in the news, news feed much more often and people are able to find us so much easier. Uh, you know, we are inundated with information, aren't we? Just even if you just do Facebook. There's just so much information that comes across that um, things get buried really, really quickly. So um, I'm just going to be sending it over to my my live stream and letting them know that I'm live streaming. Um, live streaming. My news feed. And please join me. There we go. That's to that one. And um, I think I might send it over to one of the, the closed groups, too. We're going to send it over to the Star Nations Radio Network closed group um, because that is the place where most of our um, active uh, community members are at. It's where they kind of hang out. And I'm live streaming. And then we'll do please join. There we go. There. That works. Excellent. Okay. So 
this magazine issue for December was, um, you know, it's the last one for 2018, right? And, uh, but we have been so flat out busy with all kinds of stuff that it kind of snuck up on me. And when I was searching for a cover, cover image, I was thinking about um, all of the topics that the contributing writers are going to be writing about and trying to select one that um, that I thought most of the writers would, you know, have something to say about it. And um, I did find one and I was kind of, mm, I don't know, it just doesn't really sing to me yet. And I tell you what happened. <laughs> Thanks, Stephanie. <laughs> I, I found it. I found the document. Yay. Yeah. And I printed it off. It's sitting in my printer right now. Um, and I, I realized for the, for the cover that um, we have an in-house Santa. <laughs> Star Nation's contributing writer, Carl Franklin, has been um, helping being Santa Claus for many years. And uh, he does all kinds of um, uh, work around in the December time frame into um, the end of December. And, um, and so I thought, well, gee, I'm going to ask them if we can use one of their images for Santa. And that's how we got this cover. Because why, why else? Why would I use someone else on the cover to be St. Nick or to, to be Santa Claus when we have Carl Franklin. Doesn't he look great in his in his regalia and Mrs. Claus, right? They're so cute together. And their dog, Otto. Now, when I spoke with um, both Carl and Ortrun about the, um, the cover image, I asked them um, how they would feel about using this particular photo because Otto has since walked on he crossed over a couple of years ago, and um, I didn't know how they would feel about using um, an image for Otto. You know, I didn't want to. I didn't. I didn't want to have an emotional, you know, time, a challenge for them, and because there are elders here at Star Nations, they're they're uh, part of the elder group here, and um, so to treat them with respect, right? So I asked them, and they were so thrilled to have this particular picture used as the cover because for them, they said, Otto is with, right with them all the time in spirit. And so why not? Why not have him on the cover too? So this is how and why we we used this particular cover. I, I, I know I'm partial. <laughs> but I tell you what, you know, I when I saw the mock-up, it was like, yes, that's it, that's it, that's it. Now, we did just a couple of tweaks on, um, with font and that kind of thing. But um, all in all, I think that this cover is going to turn out to be one of those uh, Star Nation's iconic pieces, is what I'm thinking. Yeah. I love it. You know, there's um, there's something about... I'm going to put it on a solo again. Taking a really uh, a better look at it, right, at the picture, you can see how happy they are. And when Carl laughs, he does have a ho, ho, ho kind of laugh. And, and it's infectious. It's infectious. Uh, when he's laughing, you can't help but smile, you know, and, uh, and, and laugh along with him. Now, he um, actually tells the story quite often about how he became um, one, of, one of the many Santas, right? Um, and that there's an, actually a school for Santas in uh, Michigan. And he went and he studied there. I think it was over a long weekend, he said. And uh, so he's all trained up as Santa. <laughs> so <clears throat> I'm going to take my phone and I'm going to take a look. Um, at the comments because earlier today in my live stream in the afternoon we were having um, a little issue with the comments to make sure that they're still coming through hey and I knew Stephanie was here and Mary Anderson fries with us too hi Mary so good to have you here with us this evening um, and and just to get some of the backstory and we're just going to be talking about the articles that are on the cover um, because I tell you what if we if we covered I think there's 17. 17 articles all together, it would be a longer show than an hour. 
<laughs> that's for sure. So let, let's get rolling here. Um, the first article, of course, is the Mystery School article. And this is the one that um, that uh, Carl and Ortrun pulled together for us. Um, Carl, actually, um, we had a show about the, true, the blessings of St. Nick. And um, their, their article, actually, the written part, um, does, oh my goodness, okay, um, <laughs> something looked different. Stephanie worked on, on the document, so it looks just a little bit different. That's okay. Um, and so I'm scrolling, here it is. So basically, Ortrun um, shared about her memories, her childhood memories from Germany. Um, of St. Nicholas and gives us the background from that culture, the culture that she grew up in and tells the story about how her family, even though they were fleeing from the East to the West, that how they still incorporated um, St. Nicholas. And also in the article, um, Carl helps us to, to understand the true blessings of St. Nicholas and he tells the story of the real St. Nicholas. Um, and so many people don't realize that that St. Nicholas was, was a real person um, because it has um, become, um, how do I want to say it, commercialized might be a, a good word for it. Um, but you know that they, the, 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 the real story of St. Nicholas has been, hasn't been told very often. And so we have our own storyteller right here uh, at Star Nations and um, they do tell the story of the real St. Nicholas, that he was, uh, he was actually a bishop um, and he was canonized um, for all the, the work that he did on behalf of the people. He, um, his parents were, were killed in an accident when he was quite young and inherited um, all their money and all their possessions. And they were quite wealthy. And, uh, it goes that he was selected um, by the church, um, and he was just a boy. He, I think he was like 10 years old when he was selected uh, to become the next bishop. And uh, he had to be called, and that his, his name had to be Nicholas. Nicholas, And so um, he actually spent all of his money, all of his holdings, helping people. And people would come from all over the, uh, all over the land, basically. Um, to come and ask him for help, and he would help as much as he possibly could. And he had uh, a tender spot in his heart for children. And so that's how the the, the blessings of the real St. Nicholas began. Um, and every time I hear the story, um, when when uh, Carl tells it, you know, it's that inner child thing. You know, it's, you're in rapture. You are glued to every word that he's saying um, of that story. And he's such a good storyteller. Um, I think what we're going to do, um, Stephanie, if it's possible, could you put the link to their to their show last week, last week, Thursday, um, where, where Carl tells the story of St. Nicholas? Yeah, that would be nice, I think, to add that into the comments. Because uh, for those people who are watching or with us um, in the live stream, it's kind of like a a nice, a nice way to be able to capture that. After this show, if you want to take some time and just listen to the, the, the story of St. Nicholas, um, I think it's like really close in the beginning of the, the hour show, uh, the Mystery School. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and listening to um, Orchard or reading her, her story um, about St. Nicholas, um, it, you know, it reminds us, reminded me anyway that um, there's there's many different perspectives it's just not our perspective here of Santa Claus or St. Nicholas here in the United States and what we grew up with but there's other facets to to that story or to that uh, that belief and uh, Urchin helps us to to see that um, through her story and when she was a child yeah thank you thank you Stephanie she um, has that link here. So after our show is done, if you want to take the time and just sit and listen to um, Carl be the storyteller, the Santa storyteller. Hmm. 
it's one of the stories as a Santa in Santa school that they had to learn and they had to learn how to retell the story. And so um, I think it's fascinating. And here we are. Hmm. Um, this is Sharon Rosenblum's article, Gluten-Free Holidays. Hmm. This idea for this article came months and months and months ago. I'm talking probably mid-summer. Mid-summer. Um, because Karen, uh, Sharon has this gift, this ability. She loves to cook. Uh, but she has this ability to really um, change up recipes so that they're much more healthy. And she is... Um, gluten intolerant and uh, and I tell you what she does in this article which is um, so educational besides is that she tells us you know about um, the gluten issue and um, the chemicals in in our food and uh, um, that actually causes the the intolerance and so there it's very educational and you know we also get some recipes. <laughs> for um, for the gluten-free holidays. I don't know about you, but you know, when, when we go someplace, um, there's more and more people who are uh, gluten intolerant. And so to have options for them, or even a whole evening that's dedicated to that, a lot of people, when they eat, eat really good gluten-free food, they don't realize it's gluten-free. It doesn't have to be the hard tack kind of, kind of situation you know it can actually be quite good yeah and so um what sharon does in almost all of her articles is that she will give us little hints and tips about what to use to substitute certain um ingredients to you know just a regular everyday run-of-the-mill recipe right and so she'll talk to us about um, the different flowers that we could possibly use. And if you use a, a certain flower, that what does that change to the moisture level and that kind of thing? And so we're just, I'm just happy and glad that we have somebody um, in our Star Nations family who really makes um, cooking healthy um, a little bit easier, a little bit easier. And she every every article includes a recipe. In a story, usually, <laughs> because it's usually one of her family's favorite recipes, um, and and how they we can um, even the ones that are um, meant to be more um, comfort food that we can still change it up. We can still change it up, and make it just a little bit healthier, and uh, and it's good for us too, and com and comforting. But you know, Sharon and Sharon is one of my sisters. We've been friends for, gosh, I've been here for twelve years. You know, it's got to be close to that 12 years that we've known each other and good friends since uh, 2006. And so, and she does all her own photography for her articles as well. And this particular picture, let me give it another solo so you guys can really see it. This particular picture is for Hanukkah. And so um, they actually sent much of the, the, the food over to where her husband works. Her husband is a doctor and sending uh, much of the food over to the residents who um, work really long hours, you know, and um, many times they don't get the holiday off. They don't get any of the holidays off. And so uh, Sharon always sends um, a good portion of, of what she makes over to them. And I bet you anything, they're really grateful for it too. <laughs> yeah, that, and that happens to be at her house, that picture. So the fireplace and the whole thing, yeah. Yeah, one of these days I'm going to make it to her house. She lives here in Wisconsin. I would like to go to go and see her her home that she's been in. I think it's three years now. No, oh my gosh, this particular article, the backstory to this one. So grateful to Laura McLaughlin, Reverend Laura McLaughlin. Um, I attended a class that Laura taught. I think it was two years ago um, on ruins. And, you know, I, I had my own runes. I just never really used them. Um, I was drawn to them. I wanted to learn how to use them. Um, but I just never took that time on my own. And with her class, um, I learned so much about them. 
And uh, so when our community, I had met with them mm, at the Star Nations Radio Network uh, closed group. I, I, it was like last year or the year before, 2016, probably, I don't know, probably late fall, something like that. And I met with them because I wanted to know what did what do you guys want to read about and hear about on the shows and adding some of those suggestions to the the topic list each month and so um a few people had written in and requested um information about runes and of all the people i know um, and have information about runes laura is the one who kind of popped into my mind and so i contacted her I want to say it was like last a year ago in September, something like that. It was almost a whole year before her article was was really due. Because I know she's really busy, right? She's a very busy lady. And I was trying to get on her calendar. <laughs> and Laura, oh Laura, she was she was so excited to be able to write the the article and um and that sort of thing. Well, time moved on. And this fall rolled around and I contacted her, sent her a message as a reminder, right? She writes back and she goes, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> she forgot. <laughs> and then she was so, you know, oh my gosh, she goes, how could I do that? I not, And as I jogged her memory, you know, I said, hey, you know, we got time. We've got time. Um, it was supposed to be in the October issue, and I said, you know what? Let's make it. Let's make it a December issue article. What a nice way to be able to bring runes that, that an ancient, ancient language and use of divination, um, but to the holy season, right? And so that's what she did. And when when I first read her her article, I thought, oh my gosh! And you know, no wonder why we had to wait for it because what Laura did was she took the her understanding of runes and her understanding of the advent calendar and brought them together to help us understand um the holy season from another perspective and um even if you're a long time user of the runes you might want to take a read of this article because um laura laura takes us to a place that um it's not just enchanting, but it, it's it's got a base to it that really helps us to um, ground our knowledge of the runes. And so I loved it. I loved it. And this picture of the runes, I found, um, I think it was, um, I want to say it was Dreams Time. I think it was. Um, and I saw that because I wanted to have... Um, a picture that that had more of a, um, an older feel to it, right? Um, so we could really get a sense of that ancientness of the ruins. And uh, I just want to check my my notes here, make sure I hit everything of the ruins that I wanted to share with you guys. Yep, yep, yep. Oop, oop, passed it by. Okay. Um, yeah, I say that Laura introduces us to the ancient use of runes. Uh, she uses the Christmas Advent calendar to frame the runes. She says, as the Christmas season approaches, we find ourselves in an Advent time. A few doors on, on the runic Advent calendar to find those personal preparatory gifts that await us inside. Who doesn't want to look inside? <laughs> you know, and so that was... That was um, I don't know. I really enjoyed it, and I hope you enjoy it, too. I do. If you want to know more about the ruins, you know, and it's, it's a good question to ask, maybe to our audience. Um, has anybody in the audience um, used runes? Um, and if you haven't, would you like to learn? You know, um, I actually had two sets. I, I had bought a set, um, gosh, it was quite a while ago, and then I was gifted a set. And uh, a good friend of mine from Alaska, Pam, call her Pamista, she was here uh, visiting you know, about two or three years ago. And uh, 
um, it takes, you know, it, to travel from Alaska to the lower 48, it, it takes commitment and it takes time because it takes a while to get here. So she spent a weekend here and um, uh, she was, and she happens to be Nordic as well. And so uh, we were talking about the ruins and she goes, I, you know, I'm so drawn to them, but I've just never, I never made time to use them. And I, I would really like to, because it's part of my ancestry. Right. And so I went upstairs and I grabbed one set and I gave them to, gave her the set. I said, I have two sets. I don't need two sets. Um, and so she took uh, one set of ruins home with her. Um, and so she's able to, to use them to practice and to be connected to her, to her culture and to her ancestors, right? Yeah. Oh my gosh, we got people in the house. We've got, of course, Stephanie and Mary, Mary Anderson Fry. We also have, hello, Renee Irvin. So glad you're here. And Anne's with us too. Hi, Anne. And Lynn Anderson Leonard's. Thank you for being here. Um, Lynn, Lynn is um, just recently started to, to join us and I'm so glad you're here, Lynn to be able to um, get some of the information. And Rochelle, Rochelle's in the house. I'm so glad you're here with us, Rochelle, because I know that you go to bed kind of early sometimes. And so, uh, and I know that you, you're healing. She had surgery not too long ago, and so she needs the rest. And so I appreciate you taking the time to be here with us tonight. So, you know, if you don't mind you guys uh, putting in the comments, if you've ever used runes, and if you haven't, would you like to learn how? Because I think that um, Laura, it would be interesting for Laura to know that there's more people out there wanting to either learn about runes or take their um, their journey with runes to uh, an even deeper place. You know, just so that she knows that she has people out there interested. I think that would be a good thing. Yeah. All right. So let's see who's up. Who's up next? <gasps> The Witch's Cauldron. Author is Adrian Campbell. And Adrian is one of our brand new um, contributing writers. Um, she is a solitary witch and her um, expertise, her gift is the herbs. And so in all of her articles, you'll find um, not just, you know, um, sharing about her journey or, or an experience, um, and being out in nature, but she'll also share with us um, recipes of sorts for like um, baths or teas or that kind of stuff and, and um, getting connected to the herbs, the herb lore. Yeah. And this is mistletoe. Isn't that pretty? Pretty mistletoe. Um, and it's very druidic. I didn't know that. Um, dru druidry that in in um, the Druid culture belief system is that the Druids would be the ones to go collect the mistletoe um, for the ceremonies, the rituals that would take place with Yule. So the article is the blessings of Yule. And I don't know about you, but I really didn't know a heck of a lot about Yule. I mean, obviously, I know I know what that is at this time of year. Um, but um, Adrian, because of her gift of herbal knowledge, she helps us and uh, helped me to understand uh, why certain um, plants are used for the rituals for you all. Um, yeah, I, I really um, found it fascinating um, to, to um, learn more about that belief system. Um, she says that, um, she says on Yule, the sun is at its most southeastern point. From this day forward, the sun will rise earlier and earlier. This is a time to honor the sun and the earth for its transition. Um, she gives us um, essential tips about bringing the warmth and comfort into our homes by honoring the Yule traditions. You know, and and it do, they do talk about um, the solstice, um, but the emphasis really is on Yule. Yeah, so I'm going to check my phone here. And of course, Rochelle is saying yes. That would be interesting. To I think you're talking about the ruins. I think <laughs> um, to have um, some knowledge about about ruins. Okay, so Yule. 
I found um, that there are some things that we have in common that we probably didn't realize, okay? Um, it helped me to understand solstice even better, even better because of the use of the plants at this time of year, the mistletoe, um, the, um, I just lost my thought there. You know, it's like the evergreens, the pine, right? The balsam and, um, and those kinds of things. Um, yeah. And I know that they're used at this time of year, but Adrian helped to really kind of tweak it and fine tune it. And it's like, this is the reason for the use of this particular plant at this time of year. And to me, that's really, really helpful. Really helpful. Yeah, I think you'll like it. Ah, this one, Sacred Darkness by Nicole Fix. What can I say about this one? Um, yeah. Well, Nicole, this is Nicole's last article in for Star Nations magazine. And it, you know, and it makes me kind of sad. Yes, it does. But I totally understand why, too, because Nicole has, has started her own um, therapy office. Um, she, she's going to be, she is a therapist. She's a social worker therapist. And so she has her own office, her own clientele she's building. And it does, it takes focused energy to build a clientele, right? And so she was, you know, trying to figure out how she wanted to do this. And she realized that she really, the writing that she wants to do, um, she wants to do in a, in a much different way. And I have to support her in that because she is a really good therapist. She really, really is. And so um, this is her, her final article for Star Nations. And I really am grateful and appreciate Nicole's uh, insight to emotional health. Um, her dedication to women and children. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, she, <laughs> I told her this once and she goes, no, I'm not. She says, I told her, I said, you're, you are one of the kindest people I know. And, um, and she, she says, no, I'm, I'm not really. She goes, I can get, I can get cranky too. And I said, well, that could be true, but I've only known you to be kind. And in her article, the darkness, a uh, sacred darkness. She shares with us that even as a child, she was much more comfort comforted in a darkened room with like no light, right? Which is usually the, the complete opposite. Most kids want to have a night light on or don't close the door so that there's you know ambulant light coming through the doorway and that kind of thing. Not her. She wanted it completely dark. And she still likes it that way. And, but you know, she relates this to um, our inner light. And um, yeah, it's a wonderful article. And the picture, you gotta see this picture. This picture I found, um, cause it's really kind of hard to find an, uh, a winter nighttime picture that has enough um, light, ambient light to be able to be able to see what it is, right? Um, and so I found this picture and I think this is, this is a street that I think that we would all feel comfortable walking down and in awe of um, the beauty of winter and how it's uh, coated all the trees and, uh, you know, it's like, like a winter wonderland. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to see my notes again here. And scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. I know it's here. Oh, here it is. Okay. Um, she shares about how she loves the darkness. Nicole relates the darkness to the solstice. The solstice provides the time to descend into darkness as a way of finding the significance of our inner light. Um, this darkness is sacred as it's meant to reconnect us to our roots. Don't you just love that? Yeah. Um, my meditation medicine room um, doesn't have any windows. And uh, so when I go in there to do meditations or journey work or anything like that, um, it 
you can't, it's so dark, you can't see your hand in front of your face. And I have to say that there is, for me, um, a sense of, of um, calmness when I'm in there. Because all of the outside stimulation isn't there anymore, right? And it's quiet. And so I can understand how Nicole loves that, even as a child. Um, yeah, because I do <laughs> right now. Now, the thing is, is I've taken friends in there to do meditations or to do journey work. And I have to be careful. I have to let people know how dark it gets because there are some people with PTSD. And it's kind of difficult for them to be in that darkened room. So, which reminds me, Nicole, that is one of her expertise areas um, is to work with people with PTSD, right? So um, if you're looking for a therapist and you live in Michigan, because that's where she's licensed at, um, and her, the name of her business is Eastern Door um, Therapy. And uh, Eastern Door, I think. I know it's Eastern Door. I don't know if it's therapy. Eastern Door. And, uh, and she's out of Grand Rapids. And in fact, she shares, she's in the same office building as uh, uh, Patricia Heredia, who is also one of our writers. Um, and, uh, and so they're in the same building. So if you're familiar, for those people who are in Michigan, in the Grand Rapids area, um, if you're familiar with Patty's work, then you'll know where Nicole's located because they're in the same building. Yeah. All right. Oh, my goodness. Oh. One of my dear friends, um, Amantha Murphy. She's from Ireland. She is a Chauvin, which um, in Native American culture, she'd be known as a medicine woman or a holy woman. Um, in the Irish sense, the old Irish, a Siobhan is a yes woman. And so um, that's what it kind of translates to, that word. Um, and I, I knew that we were going to have a featured article about women storytellers, the importance of women storytellers or female storytellers. And it was one of the articles or one of the topics that our community asked for. And so when I was researching um, and trying to figure out, you know, who should we ask to write this? Amantha was really the only one that came to mind, even after I spent a little time, you know, going through my contact lists and, and that sort of thing. And so I contacted her, I wrote to her, texted her, and she teaches a lot. And so, and she travels all over the world to teach. And so, <laughs> It, it's not um, it's not a surprise sometimes that I'll send her a message and I might not hear from her for weeks. And all of a sudden she'll pop up and she'll say, hey, I'm getting caught up on my messages and I saw this. So I did send her a message and we were able to, to connect. And uh, she says to me, yes, because she says yes woman, right? She goes, yes when I was telling her about um, the topic. Um, and, I, and she, but she, you know, she, she, hmm, she tells a good story, but she doesn't really like to write. And so I said, well, what, what if I interview you? And so we do have the interview, which I, is included in the article. Um, and we did that like in May, April or May, because that's when she was most available to do a, and I had to call her. It's not, she, you're not going to see her live on camera because um, she was in Ireland and um, <laughs> she lives in County Kerry and um, out in the middle of the country that's west of the Shannon River. So her internet is pretty spotty, okay? <laughs> And so I called her on Skype, and uh, we, we had the interview that way. But she is such a good storyteller. And we were she was actually sharing about, you know, in Ireland, um, there there's some events that occurred that really traumatized a whole nation, OK? 
okay? And one of them was the potato famine and how many people um, were starving and died because of the potato famine. And the other one are the uprisings. There was, I think, three, three major uprisings because um, the Irish really wanted to have freedom from Britain. And so um, th those, those events um, really um, marked um, their history. And so she, of course, has stories around those times, right? And she was, she was telling us that um, what villages would do is that they would, they would gather uh, and pitch in, uh, you know, the money. Sometimes it was just, you know, just coins um, that you, they could afford to give. And what they would do is it'd be like a fundraiser uh, to send one of your kids abroad. Okay. But this was literally sending one person to America. And usually that person was healthy or healthier than most so that they could survive the voyage across the ocean because that was the only way to travel at that time. Um, and so the money was, was used for to pay for their travel and their food and then just a little bit for when they got here to America to to be able to find a place to stay and to find work, right? Yeah. So it was a really difficult time. And the person who was who was selected to come to America, one of the things they had to do was they had to go from family to family, home to home, and listen to their stories, their family stories. Now, you have to keep in mind, this is a village. And so um, many of them were clan members. Okay, and so this person who was coming to America was carrying all of their stories with with them, because chances are he was never going to see those people again, because they would they would have died from the famine, and so they wanted their stories kept alive, and so um, this person um, sat through all those stories so that he he or she could remember um, the stories of that clan, so that clan was never really gone. I heard when when Amantha is telling me that, telling us the story um, in her interview, it's like, oh my God, you know, you just yeah, you know, as an empath, you know, you just kind of get your get reclucked, and uh, yeah. So female stories are very uh, storytellers are very important to humanity. Um, many times, um, it's the first stories that a child will hear is from their mother or from a mother. Um, type person, like an aunt or a grandmother, right? Um, and so female storytellers are very, very important to, um, to humanity in general. And if you, if you enjoy listening to stories, uh, you, you'll want to hear the uh, interview. Um, yeah. And if you're interested in, uh, in, if you're Irish or you're Irish descent, um, you might want to listen to because you're going to hear about about your ancestry in her interview and uh, the stories that she told. It's fascinating. You know, I haven't um, I haven't talked to her lately, Amantha. Uh, but you know, it's it's almost time for another long chat. <laughs> another long chat. She's one of my favorite people. All right. Let's see. I think I got all of the cover stories on here. I think I did. I'm going to double check. Um, my notes, just to make sure. And so we have, what I think I told you, 17, 17 articles in this um, issue. At Gluten Free, got the women's stories. Here, we got them, we did it. And we did it in 45 minutes. I think that's a record. <laughs> I think that's a record. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about the magazine itself, okay? Um, we just celebrated our fifth year anniversary for the magazine in uh, this past October. So five years, we've been doing this for five years. Um, and the December issue is uh, issue number 67. 67. Um, and we usually have a special issue that we um, publish once a year. 
We missed it last year because I was so busy with all kinds of other stuff that I just couldn't fit it on my platter to get done. But we will have a special issue for you in 2019, and it is going to be about water. We know that. Hmm. Um, the magazine itself, we, we found that um, our readership really enjoys reading the magazine in many different ways. Um, some people really, really want to hold on to the physical, um, the physical magazine itself. So they like it in print. So we found a partner, um, Mag Cloud, and we've been with them now, um, I think, three years, maybe four. Um, and they provide our magazine on print on demand. Uh, now, it does take um, about a week to get once you order it, um, but it's well worth it. It really is. Um, and I order one, a print one, for myself every issue. Um, and so I, I take a look at it, and it's more for um, assessing, right? Uh, what, what to keep, what to tweak, that kind of thing. Um, and so I have a lot of the back issues, which I'm starting to do as a giveaway in my uh, afternoon live stream uh, once a month, the third Monday. Um, is uh, we do a, a giveaway of one of the past issues, the print issues. So um, so it comes in print, print on demand. It also comes in for those people who want to be able to read it on any of their devices, whether it's their uh, laptop or desktop or tablet or telephone, so they can get it in PDF. And so you can read it on, on any, any of your, your devices. Um, and so it's it's uh, you have to upload it to your is that uploading or is that downloading? <laughs> you have to get it on your own device to do that. Now there's some of us who don't want to to have it in print and we don't want it on our hard drive. And so we have available is what's called Web Viewer um, through MagCloud. Um, and so Web Viewer is that you can purchase the magazine electronically. Um, and so you can read it on any one of your um, devices, but it's kept in the cloud. And so it's not on your hard drive at all. I know, you know, there's some people who really, really like that. I'm not one of them, but there are some, because that's why we have it available. Um, and, and then our original, our original way of providing the magazine to you um, is by your smartphone or by your tablet. So it's available through um, I, iTunes Store. The app is free. The app's free. Um, it's the magazine that is two ninety nine. Okay, and we also have subscriptions for the digital uh, through um, Apple and also through Google. So if you have an Android phone, you go to the Google Play Store and you can uh, get your copy there. If you have an Android device, whether it's your phone or whether it's a tablet, yeah. <laughs> Now, in my house, we have, I'm Apple, and Paul is Android. <laughs> and so I use his tablet to test the magazine. So, it, so, we know, so I know what it looks like and how it's functioning um, in, as in the Android version. Hmm. Yeah. So, let's see. Oh, I didn't cover mine. <laughs> okay, hang on. Um, Cindy says, I like the hard copies of the magazine. A lot of people do. A lot of people do. In fact, um, starting in 2019, we're going to be testing it out in the next week or two. Um, we're going to be including a Star Nation's crossword puzzle in the magazine. So you'll be able to get it through the print magazine and also the tablet. If you're using your phone to, to, to access the magazine, it's not going to be, be available on the phone, at least not right now. Um, I need to find a way to be able to, to get the coding done correctly if you're going to use the phone. I haven't done that yet. But we can offer it through the print and also through the tablet. Yeah. All right. Um, all right, so, um, oops, wrong document. 
Stephanie says I didn't cover mine. Well, I I actually co-authored the um, uh, the uh, importance of women storytellers. That was a feature. And my editorial, I think that's the one that uh, Stephanie's talking about. Yeah. Um, um, huh. I wonder if I even didn't probably didn't even include it in the. Oh, I did. All right. So my editorial this this month is um, a piece that I wrote called "The Language of Peace." Because when I was, you know, thinking about what what sh what should we write about, I'm talking to my spiritual team, right? What should we write about this month? Looking at the topic list, and the two words, language and peace, um, kind of got all shimmery, you know, shiny. And so I think, okay, so we're going to put those two together, language and peace. And um, I didn't know exactly how the message was going to come about, right? Bringing these two concepts together. Now, I know that there's other people who have written about it in that way, the language of peace, because, I, of course, I did my research and found a couple places to Google, and there's a couple of YouTubes out there. Um, but really what I ended up using was um, doesn't happen very often when you live out in the country, but um, on occasion, on occasion, I do have visitors um, that I don't know, um, and they're they're Jehovah Witnesses, right? And I've always taken time because I think that it's important to uh, to hear, to listen to someone else's point of view, even though I may not always agree with them. Um, I think it's important especially when it comes to beliefs, um, to keep an open mind, open heart, and be respectful and, and listen, right? And so they came to my two guys, an older man and a younger man, came to the door. And um, I'm, I'm standing here and I'm listening, and George is there with me. And, uh, <laughs> and the older man was doing most of the talking, and, and it was fine, you know, we are having a nice conversation. They were doing most. And I said, well, I think and I believe that it is a collection of stories that enlightens many people. I said, I do happen to know that um, the collection of stories there um, were selected by a group of men, and many of the stories were left out. <laughs> and so, um, you know, we, we talked about that for a bit. And then he asked me again if he if I felt that my salvation was through the Bible, and I I had to pause and I asked him if he knew much about Native America, and it was pretty obvious that he didn't. Um, and I said, well, let me share this with you: is that um, the early missionaries that came to this continent that we call Turtle Island, um, they came here to convert. The Native Americans who were the indigenous people who were here and I said in in that there's a couple things that happened one is that our immune system was not um, capable at the time to withstand the diseases that were coming over that we were we were not used to having here from a different continent right and I said and so there was many many people who died and um, because of that and the other thing is that um, is that the church worked together with the foreign government um, to come and claim the land for that government by, through their church. And when they did that, there was a lot of Native Americans who also died from that, which he didn't know anything about, of course. And so uh, the language of peace, right? The language of peace and so I, I had an opportunity I had an opportunity and and he was getting kind of assertive you know and and I used my voice I used my voice and said to him that I was uh, I graciously accepted your literature I graciously listened to your point of view and when it came time to listen to my point of view, it wasn't, you weren't really gracious. <laughs> and I said, so I, I am asking you kindly to leave. 
and um, and you know, he kept right on talking and talking over me and that kind of thing. And um, and I said, so I'm telling you in a kind way goodbye. <laughs> and and he turned around, he looked at me, and this older man, he goes, well, not goodbye, not goodbye. Maybe see you later or so long, but not goodbye. And I had to stop. I had to stop and thank him for reminding me. I said, you know, in in our indigenous languages here, I said, we don't, there, there is no indigenous nation that has a word or a term for goodbye. And so I told him, Bama Mina, which is Potawatomi for until we see each other again, right? And, and it was much, we ended so much more peaceful. And I said, and did you also know that most indigenous languages don't have swear words? So you can't curse somebody <laughs> with the English swear words. And the younger man, that was the first time he said anything that in, in that whole discussion, looked at me in a kind way and said, we have so much to learn. And I agreed with him. I said, I think we both do have so much to learn. And so that's what my editorial is about and a little bit more. Um, and so it's, thank you, Stephanie, for, for reminding me about my own editorial. Um, but it's a language of peace that um, it has, we're consciously aware of the words that we use, right? And um, yeah, and what, what, I encountered was really more about ego than the kindness. And when I was reminded about not never saying goodbye, that's when it stopped me in the tracks and said, you know what? Yeah, I, I need to be more, more aware of the words that I was using with him, you know, because we both wanted to be right. <laughs> and so it was, it, you know, I shared that experience because I think that we have, the opportunity every single day, every single day, the opportunity to to really be aware of our our spiritual path and our soul growth. That's what that turned out to be. So, oh my goodness, we're at the top of the hour. Wow. Well, I hope you enjoyed hearing some of the backstory to the articles um, and to the magazine. Hmm. It's always fun. It's um, a creative process. And I, I have to say that I'm on this journey with some very creative souls. And, um, and I just love having the opportunity to, to work with the contributing writers and to uh, provide a platform um, that we can amplify their voices. Um, their message through their articles and their shows through Star Nations and with the magazine um, to be able to reach as many people as we possibly can, right? So that's a good thing. So with that, um, next week for Communications from Home, which is Tuesday, December 18th, we're going to be um, meeting to do the Unity Breath Meditation, the Guided Meditation, because the last Tuesday of December is Christmas. And I know you guys are going to be with your families, right? We're going to be with family and doing our holiday uh, celebrations. So um, we're going to be doing the Unity Breath Meditation next week, Tuesday, instead of the last Tuesday. All right. All right. Well, um, tomorrow night is Wednesday night, and we have um, Polly Jola Bay's show, um, Soul Connections, at 7 p.m. Eastern. And so that is an evening of divine healing and divine messages. So if you um, are a worker, a light worker, an energy worker, and you haven't done your own self-care, your own healing work, Wednesday night, Wednesday, come with your, your intention and your spiritual team. And Polly Jo and her team will help us uh, heal and release. And then... If you want a card, a divination card, Polly Joe will draw a card for you and give you a mini reading. So uh, join us at uh, 7 p.m. Eastern for that, okay? At Chakra Sessions at her fan page for that. With that, enjoy the rest of your evening, and we'll see you back here next Tuesday, the 18th, for the Unity Breath Meditation. Good night, everybody. Bama Mina, until we see each other again. Love you guys. <laughs>